Okay, let us begin. In this video, we will be discussing orthographic projections. The first thing we need to understand is what an orthographic projection is. An orthographic projection is simply a method of representing any object, surface, or line onto a two dimensional screen or paper. And normally, a surface or line is already two dimensional, so it is not very useful to discuss orthographics for them. But for three dimensional objects, orthographics are very useful. What happens is in many industries we have three dimensional objects we are working with such as machines or furniture etc. What we do is we take three separate views of these models, the front view, the side view and the top view and we draw them next to each other on a piece of paper. This makes it much easier to work with. It is very difficult to pass someone a model or to store a model. It's much easier to do it with a paper or a screen and this is why we use orthographics. Uh, the three views which I mentioned are enough to completely get a to get a complete picture of the model we want or the product we want with a little bit of practice given the three views you will be able to immediately picture the model in your head and this is more than useful for some industries in technical terms the front view refers to the projection that we get onto a screen when we look at the object in the x direction the side view refers to the projection we get in the z in the y direction and the top view refers to the projection in the z direction now one point to note is that the coordinate axes are flexible. This means that the front view, top view and side view are also flexible. It is a more a matter of what we want the front view to be than what the axes tell us it to be. Why do we use orthographics? Well, as I mentioned before, the main reason is to render a three dimensional object into two dimensions. That is onto a screen or paper. The other thing to note about orthographics is that they maintain dimension. This means that in, if our model has any unknown dimensions, the orthographic model or the orthographic uh, drawing will help us to calculate these unknown directions geometrically rather than mathematically. And it simplifies the production process as we can simply input the dimensions into the manufacturing machine and get the product. Okay, now we come to the basics of orthographics. The one important thing we need to remember in orthographics is that there is a specific relative positioning of the three views. We cannot just draw the three views anywhere, anywhere we want on the paper. And there are two kinds of uh, arrangements. They call it the first angle of projection and the third angle of projection. The only difference between the two is the way in which the three views are arranged. In the first angle of projection, we have the front view on top. So when we look at the object in the x direction, and the projection we get then is what we call the front view. The top view comes directly under the front view and the side view comes on the left or right of the front view. And whether it's left or right depends on which side view we consider. If we consider the right side view, it will come on the left hand side and if we consider the left side view, it will come on the right hand side. This drawing should make things a little bit clearer. Notice that here the boxes are only to make things, only to help you understand. When we're actually drawing orthographic projections, we will not need these boxes. Although you can still draw them if it helps you to understand the concept. But with a little bit of practice, you will not need these boxes. The second kind of arrangement is called the third angle of projection. In it, the top view comes on top rather than the front view, and the front view comes under the top view. The side view again comes on the left or right of the front view. But the only difference is that this time a left side view will come on the left side of the front view and a right side view will come on the right side, unlike the uh, first angle. And again, this picture should make things a little bit clearer. The last thing we need to understand is what a projection is. Well, a projection is basically a depiction of an object onto a screen. So what it means is a projection is defined in a certain direction. Um, what it means is that if we look at the object in that direction and we imagine ourselves to have no depth perception, what will we see? Now it's important to note that any dimension in our line of sight we will not be able to perceive at all. So if we're looking at the object in the x direction, we will only be able to see the dimensions in the y direction and the z direction. And since the yz is a plane, we simply get the a projection onto a two dimensional surface. Basically, we remove one of the coordinate axes and get the two other dimensions.
Okay, now let's take a look at an example for orthographic projections. A very simple example. So let me just draw out our coordinate axes, which will make these things easier to visualize. So there you can see we have our coordinate axes. And suppose we want to get the orthographic projections of this straight line. Okay, notice this line rests on the xy plane at the bottom and is parallel to the z axis. So it's a straight line going upward, it's a vertical line. Now, suppose we first want the front view. And the front view is defined in this direction. Remember, I can define front view however I want. So I define it like this. So what will what will we see? Well, we'll basically a standing vertical line. If we project this backwards onto the yz plane, we will just see a straight line. And notice the length of this line should be equal to the length of this line, although it may not seem in my drawing. And now let's say we want the side view from here. So we want the projection onto the xz plane of the side view. Okay, try to guess what are we going to see here again? We will see a line. And the line, since we are taking a right side view, we will draw this line on the left side of our front view. Right there. So again, this, okay, if we were taking the third angle of projection, we would draw the same line on the right side view. But since we are considering first angle, we draw it on the left side. And notice that this view again will be of the same length as the original line. So all these three lines are of the exact same length. Okay, now let's consider the top view. What will happen when we look at this line from the top? Remember now from the, when we're looking at it from the top, we will not be able to perceive any, time, any depth in that direction. So we will not be able to observe or perceive the length of the line in this case. This, suppose it's one meter, let's just say it's one meter. We will not be able to perceive that one meter. What we will just see is a dot, which is the point of the line. This may take a little bit of time to visualize. It's not always intuitive to everyone. Try to imagine it. How will you see a line when it is head on to you? So a point is basically not representable. So remember, it's not a circle. It's a point, an infinitely small point. And I've just drawn the boxes to make it clearer what the front view, side view, and top view are. Okay, now let's take a look at a different example, a slightly trickier one. Uh, let me just draw the axes. So we have our z-axis, x-axis, and our y-axis. And suppose we want the orthographic projections for this line here, this green line. Okay, this line, the root of this line is on the y-axis, but it is not parallel to either of the three axes. Remember that this x-axis is actually pointing out towards us. The angle is only to make it to depict that. So the line is not parallel to any of the axes. Now suppose we want the front view in this direction. What will we see? Remember, we will be taking the projection onto this yz plane in the front view. So what will we see when we look at it in this direction? Well, we simply see the line as it is. This view is in fact the front view. Let me just draw that out. Oops. So that will be our front view. And although it may not be in this drawing, but this angle here and this angle here are the exact same. And this dimension here and this dimension here should be exactly the same. Okay, now let's come to the side view. And remember the side view is defined along the y direction. So we will see it like this. Okay, now in this side view, remember we will not be able to perceive di di uh, directions in this, this direction. We will not be able to perceive dimensions like this. So we will only be able to not be able to see this distance. Only the vertical double arrow distance we will be able to perceive. This distance here. And we will see a line. The line will just be this distance which we can perceive. We will not draw what we cannot perceive. 
in fact let me just draw we will be projecting the line onto this plane here the xz plane so what will we see we will simply see this double arrow height as a vertical line this might be a little bit difficult to visualize try to put yourself along the y direction and see the line and uh, it's not in line let me just redraw that there we have our vertical line and this distance, this vertical distance of our drawing should be the same as the gray double arrow. This distance here will be the same as this distance which we can perceive in the drawing. Now let's come to the top view. Again in the top view, we will not be able to see the line or visualize the line entirely. We will only be able to see one direction. We will be able to see will not be able to see the vertical distance now we will only see the horizontal distance and the projection will be onto this plane so now we will actually get a horizontal line we are looking at it from the top and the distance will be this small horizontal distance which we have in the drawing and that will be our top view again this is first plan remember so the top view comes to the bottom and this distance will be exactly the same as this distance which you can perceive in the drawing. Now another po important point to note is the uh, correspondence of the same point. This point here is the same as this point here. It is actually this corner point here and it is also this point here. So you notice that in all three views we have the same point and they will all correspond by virtue of straight lines. So if you draw the boxes, you will get to understand this correspondence a little more clearly. Similarly, this point is the same as this point, and is the same as this point, and is the top point in the drawing. So these, you, this is something the correspondence you will have. So from this slanted line, you will actually be able to get the other two lines.